Uh, welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Uh, this is the TQM2 uh, lecture on uh, the course lecture series under NPTEL MOOC and we are going to start the 18th lecture as shown in the some slide here. So, 18 means basically it is, uh, it has gone, we have already completed uh, 3 weeks, 3 means 3 into 5, 15 lectures have been completed, we are in the 4th week. So, by the 20th lecture, we will finish the 4th week, which is half of the, the whole program, which is for 40 lectures, which is 20 hours each week, as you know, um, we have 5 lectures each of um, half an hour each. And I am, I am Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department, IIT Kanpur. Now, in the last uh, two lectures, we are de basically deciding and, and uh, talking about the factors, their effects, uh, their, their sing singular effects. Singular means they are, effect they are, they are affecting on, on a standalone basis, then the combinations. And we considered the examples later on, the last stages which we are, which we are discussing was about the battery and, and it affects the material and at different temperatures. So, there were four um, uh, different categories of temperatures also. So, we considered also that later part we were considering the total sum of the errors for the totality and we were considering that the errors would be on, on a scale for only for A, A factor, only for B, B factor and for the combinations of A and B. And we consider the, the errors also, um, uh, total sum of the, for the errors also, which are so called white noise and then combination of all these three errors would basically be the total errors. If there is A, B, C, they would be standalone for A, for B, for C, combinations of A, B, A, C, B, C and, and the last one being A, B, C com combined uh, together. And if you consider the, the overall um, effects. Uh, for for the so called errors they were basically coming from tau i's beta j's for a and b being the factors and for combined it will be tau beta suffix ij now those um, i as you know uh, um, basically is a nomenclature of, uh, changing from uh, 1 to a beta from 1 to b and k which was basically for the sample size the total number of observations was basically k is equal to 1 to small n and the total observation set of observations was A into B into N. And we also saw the degrees of freedom based on the degrees of freedom before that we had find, uh, found out the total sum of the um, errors and divide the total sum by the, the, the degrees of freedom we found out their um, uh, mean square errors. And once we find out the mean square errors, we can find the expected value and then proceed accordingly. And another concept which we, which I was mentioning time and again was that if you remember the errors coming out from, from A, errors coming out from B were basically some additional over and above of the sigma square which was the errors from the errors, that is the standard deviations of the sigma squares um, uh, from the errors. And uh, based on that we can find out what for the example we consider that how we can find out that given the errors from total sum of the errors from A or and the sum of the errors from B and the combination of the errors from A, B. And given the total error, we can find out what is the, the sum of the errors as such. So, we can use simple calculations to find it, find it out. So, now we, we, then we consider the ANOVA table to consider it further. So, that ANOVA is shown in table 5.5 and, and also we, we, we remember that uh, one should remember that we are using the chi square or the F distribution, sorry, in order to compare. So, the comparisons would be the mean square of A versus mean square of E, mean square of B versus mean square of E, E means uh, the, uh, the errors and we can find out what are the under null hypothesis, what are the F values and we can compare whether they support the hypothesis, do not support the hypothesis and we can formulate the problems accordingly and obviously the level of significance which is alpha would be predefined before we start uh, discussing this. So, the ANOVA is shown in, in, let me continue reading it, so ANOVA is shown in table 5.5 because F, now these values of 0 0.05 is basically the alpha value and 4 was basically the number of observations or M, uh, degrees of freedom or M minus 1 depending on how the situation has been framed and 27 which is the, the last suffix which you see under F is basically the degrees of freedom N or N minus 1. 
that value comes out to be 2.73. So, we conclude there is significant interaction between the material types because you remember for the batteries we are trying to find out the, the effects of the material types and the temperatures combined together on a standard basis also. So, furthermore the value of f um, uh, of 0 0.052 and 27 comes out to be 3.35. So, the main effects of the material type and the temperature are also significant and they are basically given in the table 5.5 where you have in the first column that which is the sources of variance variations they are from the material from the temperature from the interaction of the temperature and material and the error error is basically we are using the concept of e so if i go back and define so this is basically a this is b this is e or small e whichever you do not um, so, oh sorry, sorry, my, my mistake, my mistake, sorry, I, I just jumped one step. So, this is basically E would come here and this interaction would be A into B and this is the total one. So, the sum of the square values are given. So, these are the sum of the squares, so those values are given. So, degrees of freedom are given. So, in if you remember the degrees of freedom was in A minus 1, B minus 1. So, A into 1, A minus 1 into B minus 1. So, based on that we can find out the degrees of freedom. So, the degrees of freedom are found out, the mean square are, are found out by dividing the sum of the errors by divided by the degrees of freedom. The F values are given and based on that you comment whether they support or uh, do not support the null hypothesis. To assist in interpreting the results of the experiment, it is helpful to construct a graph of the average responses at each treatment conditions. This graph is shown in figure 5.9 as stated here and shown. The significant interaction is indicated by the lack of parallelism on these lines. So, if they are parallel, parallel, so they would basically give you a, a very nice trend in the trend in the relationship. So, in general, longer life is attained at low temperatures, regardless of the material type, because the wear and tear, decay, and whatever concepts we can basically say on the on the technical part, you can basically mention that. So, changing, changing from low temperature to intermediate temperature, battery life with material type 3 may increase. So, what is now important, I am going to use the highlighter, this is for material 3, this is for material 1 and this is for material 2. So, if you find out for material 3, I will use one color now, not the yellow one. So, I use this, so for material 3. I am going from the last one, material 3, it falls like this. That means, from temperature changing from 15 to 70, the average life is almost constant. So, if you see the line which I am highlighting now is almost constant. When it changes from 70 to 125 increases, the average life changes. If I consider material 2, let me use another color, green. So, it is not constant, but the fall is almost constant. So, consider there is no break, it is a straight line. So, as temperature increases from 15 to 70, 70 to 125, the rate of change of the, the effect of average life being affected by temperature is almost constant, decreases. And if you consider material 1, let me use another color. So, basically first falls and then is almost constant. So, from 70 to 125, it is constant. So, let me read it what is written. Changing from low temperature to intermediate temperature, battery life with material 3 or may actually increase. Increase means this part. I am not going to highlight it, but I am going to show it there. It almost is in increases. Whereas, it decreases for type 1 and type 2. That means, this decreases, this decreases. From intermediate to high temperature, that means from 7 to 125, battery life decreases for material 2, yes, true. Uh, for 3, it decreases, yes, true. And it is essential unchanged for type 1, which is true. So, whatever information which I am giving are being validated by the results which have been done in greater details mathematically. So, material type 3 seems to give the best results if you want less loss of effective life as temperature increases uh, changes. So, we will basically use material of type 3. Now, we want to consider multiple comparison. We will perform Tucky's test on battery life data 
significance, uh, significant interactions would be noted down in the experiment. When interaction is significant, comparison between the means of one factor, example A or B or C may be obscured by the interpretation of A and B combined together. So, it may be possible that B is being obscured by A and B combined together or maybe that if you have 3 A, B, C, C is being obscured by the combinations of A, B or B, C or A, C or maybe by the, the overall significance of A, B, C combined all 3 together. So, one approach is to for this situation is to fix factor B at a, fix, a certain level and apply the Tucky test to the mean factor of, the, of A at that level and try to find out that if A, B is fixed or A is fixed, what effect does it have on A or vice versa on B. So, keep one fixed and try to find out the rate of change on the other. Suppose that in example which I have discussed, we are interested in detecting difference among means of the three material types. Because inter interaction is significant, we make this comparison at just one level of temperature, say level 2, which is 70 degrees. We assume that the best estimate of the area variance is the ms suffix e from the ANOVA table utilizing the assumption that the experiment error variance is the same over all treatments combinations. So, whatever the combinations or treatments you had, it will be the same. So, considering that the three material types averages as 70 degrees Fahrenheit arranged in the ascending order would be for material type 1 the average is 57.25 for material 2 average is 119.75 for material 3 it is basically 145.75. So, the temperature remains the same and I find out the averages. So, as the Tucky's capital T value if you remember we have done that Q factor multiplied by the Tucky's um, uh, the, the ratios, ratios is not the Tucky's ratio the ratio with respect to the mean square divided by the, the degrees of freedom. So, they comes out they come out to be the square root of MSC which is mean square of the errors divided by, by n, n is the sample size. So, that value is, is square root of 675.21 divided by 4 and when the Tucky's value at yeah, at alpha value of 0 0.05, which is basically 5 percent comes out to be 45.47. So, where we obtained now, uh, given that we from the appendix, if you find out it comes out to be 3.5. So, now we will do the pairwise comparison, pairwise comparison are done 3 versus 1, then we will do 3 versus 2, then we will do 2 versus 1. So, now remember we are doing the comparison for the, the uh, type with respect material type keeping temperature fixed. So, basically A was the factors along the row, B was the factors along the column. So, we keep one fixed and try to basically compare the other factor against each other at different levels. So, once we compare the, the 3 versus 1, the, the Tucky's value which comes out to be uh, in the difference between the averages which is 114.75 minus 57.25 which is 88.5 is greater than the T value and we, we say that and, and then we will basically have a decision whether we support or, or do not support. When you are comparing 3 versus 2, the difference is 145.75 minus 119.75, the value comes out to be 26 and when you are comparing 2 versus 1, it is 119.75 minus 57.25, the value comes out to be 62.5. So, this analysis what they mean is, this analysis indicates that at the temperature level of 70, the mean battery life is the same for material types 2 and 3 because for 2 and 3 it is not significant. But for the a case when you are comparing 3 versus 1, when you are comparing 2 versus 1, there is different. Which means that if you are going to classify 2 and 3 would be in one category, 1 would be at a different category for material, material comparison. And the mean value, so let me continue reading it and that the mean battery life for material type 1 is significantly lower in comparison to both type 2 and 3 which can be compared amongst each other. If interaction is significant, the experimenter could compare all A, B, that is A number of, of, of observations or a type um, factor A and for factor B, it was small b. So, we could compare all the A into B cells. So, each cell had a value. So, if you remember for N, N which basically is the highest value for K is equal to 1 to N. And the E and B cells were basically I is equal to changing from 1 to A small a, B was the uh, for B was the maximum value for the case when J was changing from 1 to B. So, for this A into B cells, 
the, the cells means to de determine which one differs significantly. In this analysis, difference between cell means in, uh, include interaction effects as well as both the main effects. In example, which is the, the material time and the battery, com the temperature comparison when you are doing for the battery, this would give 36 comparison between all possible pairs of the 9 cell means which you have. So, 9 cell because they would be compa comparing the mean values corresponding to the temperatures and also be with respect to, to the, the material. So, my temperature was 15, 15, 15, 70, 70 and 125, 125 with respect to the material type 1, 2 and 3. Now, if you want to do the model adequacy checking and uh, uh, validation, the primary diagnostic tool is residual analysis. We use the small same battery data residual shown in the uh, in which will be shown in the next slide. The residuals for the two factor models would be the error, error difference in the values. So, if you find it the errors would be y i j which is the actual value for uh, the cell corresponding to i is equal to i, j is equal to j, k is equal to k minus the estimated value for that cell would be y hat suffix i j k. So, say for example, i and j are, um, uh, are a and b and k is equal to n. So, obviously, it will be the last cell value uh, such that the actual cell value would be y suffix a b n and the estimated value would be y hat suffix a b n. So, it is basically if I am considering material uh, type 1 temperature 70 and the fourth reading. So, obviously, it will be material of type 1 temperature of 70 fourth reading. So, that I will compare with respect to y hat material type 1 temperature 70 fourth reading. So, we can find and we can find out the, the, the differences and basically fit the value. So, what is the best fit for y hat would be the average value. So, that with this it means means the average of the observations for the ith and the jth cell considering that we are changing n from k from 1 to n that means we are taking for that cell corresponding to i and j any fixed value all the observation and trying to find out the averages. So, hence the error term would be the actual value minus the average value for that cell corresponding to any fixed value of i, any fixed value of j and all combinations of n which are there. The normal probability plot of these residuals does not reveal anything particularly troublesome, although the largest negative residu residual which is minus, minus 60.75 at a temperature of 15 degrees for a material type 1 does turn out somewhat from the others that is an outlier. The standardized value of the residuals would be given and we can find out the value to be say for example, uh, 2.34 and this is the only residual whose absolute value is larger than 2 and we can basically find out some reason for that on the on the technical front. So, the residuals are given. So, the values of the residuals for uh, we can basically plot it. The material being on on the first column 1, 2, 3, the temperatures being on the first row which is 15, 70, 125. The values are given as, as they are. Uh, it is minus 4.75, 20.25, I am reading the rows, then minus 23.25, minus 17.25, minus 37.5, 12.5 and we can basically mark these values accordingly. When we do the normality plot of the residuals for this example, the normality plot comes out to be almost the same except one outlier here and the set of outliers which are here. So, obviously, there would be some technical reason for that, but it is just to show that what is the normality plot. Then if you plot the residuals versus that is E error term with respect to the, the predicted values which is y hat or y bar which we can basically take the, the overall um, the distribution correspond distribution over that is the worth the variance. So, say for example, we find out for, for, for 50 y hat value of 50 we can find out for 100, we can find out for 150 and then basically see how the dispersions, how the movements or how, how scattered they are. Similarly, we will do the plot of the residuals versus material time, material time being 1, 2, 3 and we will do the residuals plot with respect to temperatures also which is factor B, temperature is 15, 70 and 125. 
and on the y axis as I mentioned again I am repeating it is the residual or the errors. From table 5.6 we see or, or from the information we see that 15 degrees material type 1 cell contains both extreme residuals which is minus 60.75 and 45.25. So, this is a huge dispersion of the movement. These two residuals are, uh, residuals are primarily responsible for the inequality of the variance detected in the figure 5.132, 5.13 and 5.14, 5.13 and 14 are in front of you now. So, they would basically give this. So, so I am saying that for 15 and, and, and type 1, so these are the huge amount of variability. So, there must be, I am just hashing it in order to make you understand. So, there would be some, some ideas you can get about the overall dispersion of the movement. Now, the estimated models of the parameters model would be, if you remember, we have mentioned the model as y i j k suffix, suffix values are i j k, i changing from 1 to a, j changing from 1 to b, k changing from 1 to n would be equal to the average of the average of the average, which is mu, which is technically y double bar or triple bar depending on how many such factors you have is basically the average of the average of the average and you are trying to basically sum it up for 3 times. So, when I am trying to find out y i j sum up for all i, sum up for all j, sum up for all k. So, this technically in the long run should be the mu value plus tau y which is basically the, the so called movements positive negative movements with respect to the ith factor beta j would basically with the movements positive negative depending on the um, the bth factor and tau b beta um, um, in tau into beta suffix i j would basically the movements corresponding to the combination of the factor e and factor b and epsilon was the error epsilon i j k. So, how we can find out this is very simple if you remember I want to find out the average which I am just noted down. So, technically do with the estimated value which technically if I put it right it is dot 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 as shown here. So, this is basically going to make life simple for us to understand. When I find out tau y, tau y would basically be the difference. Now, i is what? i is basically for a factor. So, for any i, I want to basically find the averages for the j's and average of the n combined. So, it will be y bar i suffix dot dot. That means, we are summing up for the second and the third. So, it will be summation of the second and the third which is j and k and i being fixed as equal to anything value i equal to 1 to a. So, this is y i j k we have sum it up minus the average of the average of the average. So, that will give me tau i similarly when I want to find out beta j's so, or hat value um, because it is the estimate value it will be what? I am keeping j fixed. So, it will be summation for all the i's, summation for all the n's. So, the summation would be for all i's and all uh, k's. Sorry. So, note down here it is basically summation of i k, note down here it is the summation of j k and here j is equal to 1 to b. So, that value minus the average of the average of the average which is y bar dot 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 are the suffixes. And if I want to find out the estimated value of tau beta suffix i j, then obviously it will be summation of we will go one step at a time. First, we will find out the summation for all the n's minus that would be the summation for all the values of j and k keeping i fixed and then trying to find out the, all the summations keeping i and k fixed, i and k summing up sorry for j fixed minus the average of the average of the average values which is this one and i is equal to 1 to a. Now, choice, choice of the sample size is important. So, what are the, um, the important points to be considered are like this. The operating characteristic curves um, uh, which would be shown for each and every sample size um, uh, can be used to assist the experimenter to determine an appropriate sample size 
for a two factor model, it can be increased to the three factor models, four factor models, so on and so forth. The appropriate value of the parameter capital S phi square, which is basically corresponding to the case which you want, we, which we have considered earlier, uh, would be for the case uh, such that the numerator and the denominator degrees of freedom would be shown and a very effective way to, uh, to use these curves is to find this operating characteristics curves is to find the smaller va value of the capital phi squares corresponding to a specified difference between any two treatment levels. That means, 15, 70 or 70, 125 or 15 and 1, 1, 125. For example, if the differences in, in the two row elements is D, then the minimum value of phi square would be calcu calculated accordingly, which will be n into b, because n is basically for the for all the observations, b is for all the all the, all the numbers for factor uh, 2, which is b, and d uh, square would be the differences corresponding to, to the row means values for the, the rows, rows means for factor a. So, that is hence it will come into numerator, which will be twice into a into sigma square. Sigma square is the, the variances, a is the number of observations and y2 because you are taking the averages in the long run. So, it will be the difference if any and in the case when you are trying to find out the differences of the columns, then just replace b by a as you see. So, this b value which I am circling would be replaced by a, n remains fixed, n remains fixed d square which I am taking as a symbol or, a, or a, the notif uh, notation for to find out the differences between either the rows or the columns remains as it is d square and in the and in the denominator 2 remains as it is, sigma square remains as it is and I am and in the first case I find out for the rows. So, hence it was a, now I find out for the columns hence it is b. So, operating characteristic curve parameters for, uh, for, the, for the two factor models, there is fixed effect models. So, the factors are given A, B, A, B, it can be continued to A, B, C, A, C, B, C, A, B, C. So, phi, capital phi squares values are given in the in, and, and the degrees of freedoms are given based on the degrees of freedom, you can find out the corresponding average values as required. So, with this I will end uh, this 18th lecture and continue more discussion about the factor models and expand it and basically try to consider more examples for a better understanding. Have a nice day and thank you very much.